Hi, and welcome back to my kitchen. The last time you saw me here, I was attempting to make Maggie Goring. Oh my gosh, was that a disaster. I've gotten better at it now, but I wanted to show you something different today. In my experience, everyone loves mac and cheese worldwide. I've met a few people in my life who didn't like it, but mm, I don't know about them. So my whole life, I've been trying to find the perfect mac and cheese recipe. And I think I found one. So join me and I'll get started on it right now and show you how. It's easy as can be. I always thought my mother made good mac and cheese, but now I realize she really didn't. It was very eggy and stiff. And I like it creamy, and I think most people do, too. Okay, so I think I've got a couple of cups of sharp cheddar cheese grated here. I use this one, and then I used another one. So I have two different kinds in this. But you can use any kind of cheese you like, really. If you prefer it to be a more orange color, use the orange colored cheddar cheese but I don't mind it just being white. For those of you who don't know me, and it's your first time here, my name's Taylor. I'm an American expat who lives in Malaysia, and I like to share my life and travel experiences with you, and an occasional cooking lesson, sometimes better than others. The secret to this mac and cheese recipe is cream cheese. Now, my whole life, I was always taught that you had to make a roux of flour and butter in order to make the cream sauce and make it creamy. But that's just not true. I'll show you, this comes out beautifully and you don't have to mess with that. And it's just one less step, which is great. Okay, so I have a frying pan here on sort of a low heat and I'm gonna put the cream cheese, which is already softened in it. Just pile it in like this. Oh, I don't think this is quite as soft as I like it to be, but we'll see how that works out. In the meantime, I have water going back here. Not quite boiling yet. Now you don't want to burn the cream cheese or heat it up too fast. It needs to heat slowly to get really creamy and nice. So don't get impatient. I think I might have missed a step. Oh, like this is, this is sort of reminiscent of my Maggie Goring. I put a little butter in it too, just to make it creamier or more delicious, I don't know. Now obviously the cream cheese by itself is gonna to be too thick. So you have to add some milk to it as you go. And I just sort of eyeball it till I see it's the right consistency. It probably helps if the milk is at room temperature. See, that's looking good. The cream cheese is melting nicely. I'm sure many of you think that this is probably gonna to be too rich being made with cream cheese. And the problem that I would anticipate with using cream cheese is that it's kind of sweet. But when you add a really nice sharp cheddar cheese to it, and I put a little Parmesan in too, it's not really too sweet at all. Now my water's boiling, so I'm gonna put in about a little more than half a package. Now I'm doing it, I'm doing a sm sort of a smaller amount than you probably would at home. You could probably use a whole package at home because I have to make this in my air fryer because that's all I have. So I get this going. Of course it stops boiling as soon as you throw the pasta in. Give it a little stir. Put the lid back on. So I think this is about the right consistency. It's still pretty thick, but I don't like it to be runny or watery like a lot, like most of the mac and cheese I've had in restaurants here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, cheddar cheese now. Yep. Oh, it's about to hold the oil over. Now make sure your hands are clean because you don't wanna touch anything with, with dirty hands. So I made a pile of cheese here, way more than I think I need. So I'm just gonna eyeball this too. So I put some in and I'll stir that around and see how it goes. Let's see, it should start melting right away. I 
I can't ever seem to get the boiling water just right. If I put the lid back on, it just starts boiling over. If I take the lid off, it stops boiling. <laughs> if anybody has any tips on that, that would be great. See, it's not so hot, so the cheese is sort of gently melting. Oh, it's going to be so cheesy. Another thing I like to put in my mac and cheese is crushed red pepper. Not a lot, because you don't really want it spicy, but just enough to give it a little bit of a kick. Stop boiling again, just like I said. I also put black pepper in it too. And because the cheese is kind of naturally salty, you don't really need to use a lot of salt, but I am going to put some in. I'm going to taste it now to see if it needs any salt. Actually, no, it doesn't need any salt. Plenty salty from the cheese. And you can always add salt when you're eating it, but you can't take salt away. Just something I've learned the hard way many times. Okay, I'm gonna put Parmesan cheese too. Not a lot. Oh, that looks so rich and creamy. So the timer went off a few, se a few seconds ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the pasta. And see, I just do it this way rather than draining it. I mean, it does get drained in this slotted spoon, but it's just less cleanup if I don't have to use the colander. This is just easier if you ask me. And it gives it a little bit of needed moisture. I think that's all I'm gonna try to get out. So now you just mix that in. Mmm. Look how creamy that looks. Honestly, I always thought that mac and cheese was such a no-brainer that it was so easy to make, but I've tried and tried many, many different recipes, and they just are all turning out disappointing. So this is the first one I found that I really, really like in my entire long, long life. <laughs> okay, that looks good. Let's turn off the stove. And that's ready to go. The next step, I'm going to use a big spoon because I have to put it in this little teeny container. It surprises me how much this little container can hold, though. This is quite a lot of mac and cheese, way more than two people. I think four people would could easily eat this. As you get a little more towards the end, you can sort of scoop it in. Perfect. Everyone, see that just fits. Doesn't that look yummy already? So the pasta is all ready to go. It's in the little pan that I'm gonna put in the air fryer. But I like to put a crunchy topping on top. Really, that's my favorite part. And I bet it's your favorite part too. So to make the crunchy topping, I take a nice little bit of butter like this, and I just put it in the microwave for a second or two, or well, 30 seconds probably. So 30 seconds was just fine to melt that butter. It's just perfect now. And I'm gonna put some breadcrumbs in it. This is the kind I bought. Now normally I use Enko breadcrumbs, the Japanese kind, but I couldn't find those at the village grocer. And I saw these and they look like panko and they act like panko. So they're good enough. I guess that's about a cup or so of breadcrumbs I put in there. Ow, ow, the bowl's hot. <laughs> breadcrumbs butter and some Parmesan cheese with a dry spoon, just mix it all up. You get a little bit of butter on all the breadcrumbs and all the cheese. Now I'm just gonna spread it on the top here. And you can put as much or as little as you like. Now, I think this clearly looks like too much, but I can always save it and put it on leftovers later. Okay, so that looks good. Just gonna put it in the air fryer at about 180, not the full 200. And I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it because it can burn very quickly and you don't want that. Now, normally I would have a nice salad with this to cut some of the richness of the mac and cheese, but I didn't get around to getting a salad today. So I'm gonna just fry up some ham slices to go with it and that'll be delicious. And if you don't eat pork, you could use like chicken ham. That would work just as well. Let's see how it's doing. 
Oh my, it's looking good. Won't be long now. And see the ham's hot, the ham's just frying up beautifully. This is a really easy recipe, but so delicious. I wish you'd try it and let me know in the comments if you like it. I'm getting kind of sweaty in here. <laughs> the only reason it works is because it's already hot. You know, I've already melted the cheese and the cheese sauce and it's all hot when I mix the pasta in. And then I put it in there, put the topping on and get it right into the air fryer. That way it's gonna be delicious. You'll get your crunchy top and it'll be nice and creamy and hot in the middle. Okay, I just took it out of the air fryer. I'm gonna show you how it looks now. It looks so delicious. Does that look good to you? It looks delicious to me. Now I wish I had made a salad but it'll still be good. It's all on the plate. And I put some ham on it. And doesn't that look yummy? I can't wait to dive in. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed today's cooking lesson. I think I did a little bit better than I did with the Maggie Goring. Tell me in the comments if you think so. As always, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you like watching me cook, let me know. I'll do another recipe sometime. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.